Hey, Gerard. All right, guys. Welcome to Agent Mastermind University. Super excited to have my uh, dear friend with me, Richard Smith, business partner. Also, another business partner and friend, a dear friend of mine, Doug Cataray. What's up, brother? What's up, guys? And then uh, Gerard, all the way from the Philippines, has joined us today, which is super, uber cool. Very it shows cool. you how awesome tech. You know, I, hey, Richard, I, I was just thinking, it wasn't probably, what, five years ago we couldn't do this. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe not, maybe a little bit longer than that, but uh, it wasn't long. Well, there's no way we could communicate like this. And I guess Skype, right. could, we could do it, but... Uh, this is pretty cool to be able to bring somebody in from so far away, a different country, different time zone. I mean, it, w w Jared, what time is it out there right now? It's 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning. Well, that's commitment Holy right smokes, there. Man. That's commitment Holy right smokes. there. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, that, this right, is so, pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'm going to let these guys take it away. Um, man, I, I, I can't stress enough. Like, And I did a little video before, before this just to let you guys know um, – the one thing that has changed Richard's life, Doug's life, uh, everybody that I know that has taken their business from where it is to where they want to be, it didn't come by themselves. It came with having some help to go along with it. And um, Gerard is going to explain the virtual assistant model. And whether it's a virtual assistant in the Philippines, in the U.S., it doesn't matter. But um, Gerard has been instrumental in helping Richard to grow his business, but also instrumental in helping other people find virtual assistants to help them with uh, just about everything that has to do with, with everything but selling. And uh, in fact, he's even setting up and doing some things that has to do with starting the selling process when it comes to appointments and stuff like that. So I'm going to turn this over. I just want to make a small introduction. Richard and I have been working together for, I don't know, six or seven years now. A dear friend of mine, we hang out together. We party together. He's just a, just a cool dude. So if you guys don't know Richard, you need to uh, definitely get to know Richard Smith. And then Gerard, is his uh, right hand that has been instrumental in helping so many people to find virtual assistants uh, over in the Philippines. And Gerard, thank you for being so awesome at that. So I, I sincerely appreciate it. Well, it's awesome. It's awesome. Great that you have us on here. And, and um, what we're going to kind of talk about are some of the biggest, most common questions loan officers and realtors have uh, with the discussion of should I hire a virtual assistant? What is a virtual assistant? So, so really the biggest questions, the most asked questions that we've seen. Awesome. Awesome. Great. And I think, you know, I, I don't know, you guys sent me a PowerPoint, but you guys, I want you guys to run that just so you can kind of throw through, you know, roll through the slides whenever you want. So sure. Gerard, do you want to pull that up or Richard or whatever? Um, that would be cool. Gerard, can you pull that up? Because I, I am, I'm using a different computer. I don't have it on this one. I hope you have access to it. And you're, 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 you're muted. Yeah, so should I share my screen? Yes, that would be awesome. Absolutely. Okay, one sec. All right. Mm -hmm. If you click the green button once and then the screen you want to share twice, it'll allow you to, to uh, pop that out there. There you go. Awesome. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Looks great. Yeah. Look. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, Richard will discuss today. You know, um, how are you gonna overcome your resistance in your business by you know by hiring a virtual assistant and how you could actually make it work for your business. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, man. Yep, I can hear. Hey, Gerard, can you turn your volume of your voice up a little bit? Awesome. Yeah, I think my volume is up. <laughs> yeah. So take it away, Gerard, I, and I'll and I'll help too if if there's anything that comes to my mind, and we'll kind of we'll kind of go through it for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I'll okay. do the same. Oh, perfect. So, Mr. Smith, what can you say about resistance? Um, resistance, I guess I've, I've talked to hundreds, if not thousands of loan officers and realtors and um, a lot, I think a lot of people have a fear or, you know, most fears just means you don't know something or you don't know the answer. And what we're going to go over is kind of 
to shed a light on virtual assistants, what they can do to help grow your business and help you have more freedom. And like Scotty says, help you, the agent, help you, the loan officer, focus on your money-making activities and focus on the things that are bringing you business and having a virtual assistant help you with the other things. So we're going to kind of go through that. So Gerard, what is a virtual assistant? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think, you know, um, a virtual assistant is kind of like um, an in-house assistant is that could provide some work support for you, um, perform some tasks for you and your business. But, you know, the mentality is, or the work situation is that they're working remotely. It's either, you know, um, in the United States, in Mexico, in India, um, in Singapore or in the Philippines. And this work situation kind of will work, usually works with a lot of entrepreneurs because, um, you know, in-house assistants, you know, virtual assistants, um, they would um, cost less. So that will be discussed with Richard, you know, in terms of what are the, you know, um, the qualities of an in-house assistant and, you know, versus virtual assistant. I mean, Mr. Smith, what prompted you to hire me before? So, so virtual assistants, the things that, that we looked at, and I might be going a little bit ahead, is that in the Philippines, there's a um, huge, I guess, the, in the Philippines, pe people actually go to school to become a virtual assistant. And the, the cost of living is so different there. So when if we're paying somebody a new virtual assistant four dollars or four fifty an hour, with the the way the cost of living is different in the Philippines, that's that's a good twenty dollars or so an hour to them, um, and they get they also get the freedoms. They get the freedoms to work from home. So an in-house assistant obviously is in-house. A virtual assistant is working from home. Um, they have the ability to, and we kind of joke about this, but. But it's true, if Gerard is working overnight, which he's working nine to five central US time, and he's on the phone and he's working behind the scenes, you know, he literally could be in his pajamas working and it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's the freedom that the VA has and it, it, which allows the freedoms of the loan officer or the realtor here in the United States. So in a lot of time, a lot of questions I get Gerard is, you know, what if I need my virtual, or what, what can a virtual assistant not do? So if, if Gerard's in the Philippines, really the only thing in, in my business that I think he cannot do is physically write like handwritten notes. But with the digital age that we're in and, and um, everything's done by phone, by text, by email, by software, computer, I mean, every, it's like 90% 95% of what we do can be done virtually. And so, and the other really great thing about um, virtual assistants is the fact that it is a, a time change. And um, if Gerard is working from 10 p.m. to let's say 6 a.m., he, he has no distractions. He's, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, just like I can tell you if I'm up all night, there's not, many distractions going on. So it's it's a win-win for everybody. And Gerard, you can kind of tell me too that what um, what are your thoughts on on um, the things that you do and how you help, um, you know, not just me, but before when you were a virtual assistant before me. And, you know, Gerard's been with me seven years, so it seems like a lifetime. But some of the things that... Um, has there ever been anything that you said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that because I'm in the Philippines? There's been nothing, right? Yes, nothing. Well, except for, you know, um, those activities that, um, that can be, you know, that can be done physically. Like, you know, maybe sending gifts or right. um, writing um, handwritten notes. So. Which even those can be done digitally. So, okay, cool. Even I, think, I think one of the... One of the things um, that, you know, a couple of differences here is one, if, you, if it's in house, like, w which means it's going to set with you, you got to provide them a space, which now you're talking about more expense. You're talking about phones, computers, all that stuff. Like, I mean, you still got to provide that. Um, but 
just having them have to come into your office or have a place to have them to come into is one more thing you have to worry about where if they're virtual, so many people can like, can do so much more in the drive time that it takes to get to the office. Right. The, uh, you know, and there's, there's so many different things where they can be so much more productive if all they have to do is work. Uh, and not only that, it's all, you know, most of the things with the virtual assistant is it's, it's results driven with when it comes to real estate with, with the real estate business. So that's, you know, the pros and cons for me would be, man, if, if I want somebody to come in, I got to house them. Uh, I got to provide a, you know, office and a restroom and coffee and all the, there's all these little expenses to add up where if it's virtual, uh, whether it's in the Philippines or locally to working out of their home, most of the time people have their own equipment you know computer per se and phones so uh you know a couple differences there right right and, and i'll and i'll add to that real quick is with with technology like you were talking about with zoom or using zoom conference calling um with that technology with with uh programs like asana and things like that it, it does allow the communication is actually better than having somebody in house because when you have somebody in house you tend to micromanage them and and really we are results driven um i'm not, gerard i'm never checking up on gerard i mean he in joyce L or any other vas that have worked for me because they know what to do we have a little huddle um every day and then it just gets done the results are there so that's another thing, you know, and, and like you said, the costs of having somebody in house and, you know, just, um, it's, it's a big difference. Yeah. Can we talk real quick to, um, one of the things that I, um, and I'm, I'm not, I mean, I guess the big thing is with a virtual assistant, um, they can be 1099 with like with somebody like Gerard, you're not paying healthcare. You're not paying the benefits. You're not, not that I, not that I'm against it, and like, but it's just one more thing that costs the cost of the a U.S. citizen, a U.S. employee. It makes it so much higher because of these costs. And I'm not against it, but um, I'm just saying, if I can get something done for a third of the price, a task that is going to generate me another referral, a better, deeper relationship, uh, you know, all these tasks that you're going to go over there in a few minutes. But uh, it's a big deal. So. Yep, I agree. Hey, we have a quick question from somebody. When do you, when do you do your huddle? Is it via text, Zoom? Do you see each other? How do you do that? The the my favorite way, and I think the best way, is to do a Zoom huddle because you're actually seeing each other, kind of like we're seeing each other right now. And it's it's very similar, like to me, honestly, because we have a lot of remote employees. It's really no different than having a huddle, a physical huddle and everybody being in the same room because we all see each other. We're on video. Um, it's, you know, you, you feel the same emotions. And when you're talking, it's person to person. So, yeah, I, I, I try to make it as much like being in person as possible. And, and it truly does. You're very welcome. So this is so it. This question comes up a lot from realtors um, and it goes same with loan officers, you know, are there legalities, are there things that your VA can and can't do? And to kind of answer that, when we hire virtual assistants for realtors and loan officers, they're having their VAs do pretty much um, everything with the exception of like, let's say, realtors they're not answering real estate questions because you have to be licensed to do that so for example when the vas are making outbound calls to expired listings or outbound calls to potential buyers or sellers what they're doing is they're setting up appointments they're looking for people with their hand raised i want to talk to the realtor and they're setting up appointments with that agent and at that time or they're forwarding the call live to the agent so at that time, the realtor, the licensed realtor is answering questions about real estate. So they're really, they're just setting appointments um, because legally you cannot answer real estate questions if you don't have a license. So, so you think about it this way. We have an example where we had a virtual assistant call a list of 700 um, leads. They were like one or two year old Zillow leads. 
that nobody ever followed up on or people, you know, they just weren't ready to buy when the leads came through. So the VA made a call or made calls, simple script. Hey, this is Michelle with the Richard Smith team. Richard wanted me to call and ask if you're still interested in buying or selling a house in the next six months. And she called for four hours. She got four people that said, yes, I want to sell my house. And three people that said, yes, I want to buy a house. And so we kind of look at it as they're making those calls and it doesn't matter how many they call because it's all results driven. So the results come. I talk to realtors every day and they all tell me the same thing. I just can't make those calls. You know, I get, I get bummed out if I make 10 calls and they all hang up on me. Well, the VA makes the call. So, and, and what, like I said, they're, they are, they're setting appointments and they're not answering questions. And it's same with the, for the mortgage loan officers. I don't know any loan officers that hire a VA to help work on uh, borrowers documentation because we have to be licensed to do that. So they're working on things that would keep the loan officer away from either money-making activities or working if they're putting their files together everything else is taking that LO away from that. And so when I say everything else, I'm talking about marketing, lead gen, social media, building their database, following up with clients by text, by phone calls. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of things. And if anybody's ever interested in a list of what VAs do for realtors and list of what VAs do for loan officers, um, get with uh, Gerard and we can send that over. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So th there are actually virtual assistants who are trained and there are virtual assistants who, you know, just like a regular employee, there's a newbie and there's a tenured one. And just like what we mentioned or Richard mentioned earlier, you know, um, you can use Zoom in training your virtual assistant. I mean, I myself, I started with Richard since 2012 or I started with him last 2012 and all I really knew about you know, I'm um, working as a virtual assistant is just um, doing the phone calls for him. Um, Richard didn't um, hand to me everything, but he invested in me. He provided trainings for me, training to, to learn how to do social media, how to do search engine optimization, how to even manage some blogs and, you know, create some blogs from scratch. So since you are in if, if if you're really contemplating or if you're really wanting to invest a virtual assistant and if you're kind of um really looking to um hire a newbie so this is an opportunity for you to invest and grow with your virtual assistants although there are virtual assistants who kind of um being exposed into an amalgam of tasks but sometimes you really can't expect them to do everything for you thoughts mr smith yeah, I, I want to add to that because because what I've seen to add what you just said is most of the time when you hire a virtual assistant for a realtor or a loan officer, they have a niche that they're very experienced in. So they might be really good at making phone calls and have worked in call centers and just have a great rapport on the phone, but may not be as good at putting together ads or putting together a database or doing social media or doing landing pages or Facebook ads, things like that. And so what Gerard is really, really good at is when he's hiring a virtual assistant for somebody, he's not just hiring for what they know now. He's hiring people that have and show the ability to be a self learner. And so when Gerard just said that I provided him with trainings, I'm going to be honest with you, me providing Gerard with trainings was Gerard, go to YouTube or go to Google, put how to, and then whatever the thing you're doing, because he taught himself. I didn't teach Gerard. Gerard knows much more than me about pretty much every program and software that we use and things. So he knows how to do it because he has that ability to, to learn and the drive to teach himself. And those are the VAs that we hire. So they may, they may not have experience in everything, but they have the ability to, to, uh, to do that and teach themselves. So that, that's a big plus. Stop being so humble, Gerard. <laughs> and for the 
across a virtual assistant. So yes, so in today's market, I'm just gonna give you guys an idea as to how much is, you know, the hourly rates of virtual assistants. So if you're looking for a total newbie, I mean, this is a fair market game here. I mean, I don't want um, you to um, really do some low ball offers because, you know, sometimes it would just go south for you guys. Um, this is one of the reasons why, you know, um, realtors or loan officers fail because they are, you know, um, underpaying um, their virtual assistants. So if you're looking for a total newbie or let's say a virtual assistant who had um, less than six months work experience as a virtual professional, so that would fall from $4 per hour. But if you're looking for someone who's had, you know, less than two years or at least, you know, um, over a year work experience as a virtual professional, so that would fall from $5 per hour. Uh, and if you're looking for um, a high caliber virtual assistant, tenured one with two to three years work experience as a virtual professional, that would fall from $6 per hour. But then again, these rates are just you know, admin, phone calls, social media, CRM management, calendar management. But if you're looking for a perhaps a more advanced um, skilled worker like um, SEO or search engine optimization, um, there's a different charge to it that may fall from 15 to $18 per hour. So, so just to clarify, just to clarify, and I don't know if everybody on this call heard that. So, or if you're hearing this live or hearing that on recording, four to six dollars an hour, uh, and that's, um, and we're going to talk about full time, part time, whatever. Um, the other thing I want to back up one slide is on the on the training. The cool part about this training for whether you know whether your virtual assistant's in house or not. Um, the 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 availability to do a video to train someone or record the calls when you're training someone is so powerful so you don't have to keep repeating yourself or um keep going okay what was it like you record all your calls when it comes to training somebody on what you exactly want to do for example say you wanted your your va to friend every one of your make sure you're you printed every one of your past database uh on facebook and then you went in and sent them a personal message and then you sent them a personal uh, video from you um, that, that, that's, that's real easy to show and train and, and do a video on. Um, just about anything you do is recordable and trainable. Right. And so that's the cool part about having an assistant is like, you, like the biggest part about this, like this class is you have to let go to grow. And I just made that up. You have to let go to grow. So, yeah. um, because you, if you're not selling, nobody's selling. And what happens is when people get more business, they start to stop doing what they did to get the business to take care of the business. And that's where these assistants come in is to help you with that, um, that work. And that's what's allowed us to grow so big uh, and everybody that's hired somebody to help do all of this stuff. And we're gonna talk about what that stuff could be. Yeah, and you make a really, really good point, Scotty, because that's what, that's what we've seen more than ever is the LOs and realtors that are, that are hiring VAs and, and myself is when you, when you, this is what we've seen in a normal, in normal life, let's say a realtor, they get busy, they do some marketing, they get super busy and they're helping their clients, they're helping buyers, helping sellers for a loan officer, they're putting files together, helping bars and getting real busy, especially this time of year. And everything else stops. All the marketing stops, all the connections on social media stop. They sometimes don't have time to even put new people in their database. I mean, it all stops because they're busy, busy, busy. So where having that VA really, truly helps. And I, I think it's been the number one thing is the, the elimination of the roller coaster business for these LOs and, and uh, realtors. Because no matter how busy they are, all of that stuff is consistently still being done. And it's just amazing. I mean, I, I can be out a week and my social media never stops. And, and right. people, people don't, nobody knows if I posted it or my VA posted it because my VA, she has become me on social media. She, she watched how I posted. We shared screens and she watched how I posted. She reviewed, she knows exactly what kind of things I say. She knows how I respond. So, it's that's the key you keyed in on it scotty is it continues to get done consistently even when you don't have time to do it well and, and not only that to add to that it goes to doug's you know the care model and creating a referable experience 
Right. Um, this allows you to continue to do that as you grow to create that referral experience so that your customers have an exceptional experience that allows you to accept and get referrals, right? Or earn or be worthy of a referral. And that's the, that's the whole point of having, yeah. creating this process of a referable experience so that's what, I mean, there's so many reasons yeah, yeah. and it allows you to stay in, yeah it's, it allows you to stay intentional in your conversations because we make money when we're intentionally asking for the business and uh, you know creating those moments of gratitude and our team is doing it as well and i think anytime we understand that our lane is about delegating and deleting you know our lane is not to delegate or delete things our, our, our VAs are supposed to be doing it. Our simple job is to do what we know makes us money. Like you said at the beginning, Scott, it's to sell. It's to make money. It's to create relationships. Yeah. And when we get caught up in all the minutia, guys like Gerard take control over that situation and we can let it go and let our brains be more free to capitalize on those moments of gratitude. Yeah. Awesome. Well said. Amen. Yeah. So going back um, with the cost, uh, it would cost you from between um, four dollars to six dollars um, per hour for administrative tasks but if you're looking for more advanced support like you know website building and you know search engine optimization like google adwords google, google analytics so that would fall from 15 to 18 dollars per hour and how do i pay them well there are a lot of outlets today in today's technology so there's paypal that's number one and we have Western Union. And if you guys want to know more, you know, we can send you some resources as to the payment options. There's World Remit, um, TransferWise, Remitly. There's a lot that you can actually explore. And it was just normally cost you $5 to $7 per hour. I mean, $5 to seven hour, $7 per transaction, depending on how much you're sending the virtual assistant. Yeah, and I, I use Western Union and we touched on this earlier, but with, and, and I'm not a CPA, I'm not an attorney, but I have had no issues over the years. It, it, what, I equip, what I equate to a virtual assistant when I pay is it's a marketing expense. Um, so it's no different if you hire somebody to fix your website. They're not an hourly employee. They're not, they don't have, you know, you don't pay W-2. It's a marketing expense. And so, we pay it as a marketing expense and we just transfer the money over and it's pretty simple. Um, so yeah, so yeah. And are you required to hire on a full-time basis? And no, you have the option if you want to hire somebody for full-time, for part-time, for two hours a day, an hour a day, or for project, I mean, project management. Like, you know, if you want someone to build your website, so that's typically, you know, a project base and there is no contract required and you know the virtual assistant could could work technically um during your work hours or you know your operational hours so um, apparently i'm working 8 a.m up until 4 p.m or 9 a.m up until 5 p.m central standard time so you can set the work hours and Gerard, and, and Gerard, real quick um i think this is a big mistake by a lot of people we think that everybody needs to work 40 hours or if we hire somebody I need to pay them 40 hours and it's absolutely not the case. Not the case. So if you put an ad out there saying, I'm looking for somebody two hours a day, four days a week, and somebody answers that ad, guess what? That's what they want to work. That's what they can work, can work. Mm -hmm. So if nobody answered the ad, I guess then obviously that's, that's an issue. But um, two hours, think, think about if you literally did nothing but, and you put somebody in charge for two hours a day, and you did nothing but dial for dollars. You went out and knocked doors. You went out and did whatever you do to get more business in the door while you're, and all they did was maybe answer phones or maybe they ran your social media or liked different comments on or post of your past database or social media or they marketed to Fizbo's or called, like whatever it is that you know, whatever that activity is, it's gonna keep the bus moving while you're doing the high-end dollar money making activities, what would that look like if you spent eight hours every week doing that activity while someone else was taking care of the other stuff that needs to get done, but doesn't have to be done by you? Big yeah. deal. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, we've had VAs that work two hours a day and run the entire social media. We have some that work two hours a day making those, phone calls and getting expired listing leads and 
and so many other things. So yes, um, there's, you can have full-time, you can have part-time, you can have two VAs and have both. So it's really up in the air, but there is no requirement. And to kind of add to the, the, the requirement, is it full-time, part-time? When do they work? How much do they get paid? That's totally up to you and your VA to agree upon that. Um, I, I, the majority, like Gerard said, the majority of uh, loan officers and realtors want their VAs to work during the time they're working because they can make phone calls on their behalf and do things live in our time. And the VAs in the Philippines, they don't mind at all working the night shift. Um, and there's so many call centers and so much. Um, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but in, in the United States, like most kids growing up, their first jobs are retail or, or restaurants. I think in the Philippines, a lot of um, younger people get their first job experience working in call centers. So they, they, um, they um, have that experience and things. Yeah. So I think they should. I think they should get a job working in a call center. That's a huge that's yeah. great to get paid to do to do a job where you don't have to rely on getting paid on commissions. I would highly recommend. I mean, I sold Kirby's for God's sake, you know, knocking yeah. on doors trying to sell Kirby vacuum cleaners. It was the best training I've ever had in my life. There's a great question coming in by Rose, and we're going to cover this, Rose. It says, "How do you find a qualified VA for a business?" And uh, Gerard can touch on that, what he has done and, and does do to help people find their specific person, and uh, whether it's you know, and specifically in the Philippines. Oh, yes. And going back to hiring a full-time basis. So, you know, just for expectation setting, if you're looking to hire somebody for a few hours per week, or let's say a part-time basis, you really can expect them to work exclusively for you. So it's kind of expected that this person is working for somebody else, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the same industry or how much more in the same, in the same state. So you just really guys to me, uh, you guys need to make sure that there's really no conflict of interest here if you're going to hire somebody on a part-time basis. And the work hours, I guess it was answered before, that would depend on your agreement. It's either um, during your operational hours, you can technically um, set the work hours and, and um, you can choose whether, you know, it's in the morning, in the afternoon, late evening, I mean, early evening, or, you know, um, even on weekends, you can request virtual assistants to cover weekends for you. And there are virtual assistants who are working on a flexible basis, like, you know, if they're just building your website or doing some social media, since, you know, social media nowadays can be scheduled and um, search engine optimization too. Is there a con contract? No, we are sub subcontractors and um, you just have, uh, or you just need to hire a virtual assistant when you need them. Right, Mr. Smith? Did yeah, I say correct? I think yeah, and I want to add to that. There is no contract. It's just like having an employee. If for some reason they're not working out, um, you have to fire them. If for some reason they're not happy, they're going to let you know and quit. I mean, it's, it's really no different, but there's no contract. I will say this, though. The, I, I look at it two ways. The Bert, and Gerard can probably remember this when we first met seven years ago. The virtual assistant, they want a long-term relationship because they don't want to bounce job from job to job and the loan officer or the realtor they definitely want a long-term um, agreement not it's not an agreement but they want a long-term relationship because I can tell you when you have a virtual assistant you are gonna make more money you are gonna grow your business you are gonna have more freedom it it just happens and so why would you not want that relationship in the future? Because it's helping you grow your business, make more money, help more people, and have more freedom. So yes, there's it's it's strictly you know you have you get the right fit, and it's long term. And that's where Gerard is so so good at helping helping people hire VAs because he looks for the right fit. He looks for personalities that fit together. He's just not looking for a great VA. I mean, he is doing that, but he's looking for for matching people together and it, to be a long term, long term relationship. So yeah, hope hope that answered that. Yeah. Hey, Richard. Hey, Richard um, I don't know who. If it's Richard Gerard, I got a question for you. 
Wendell saying, I only have two ways to pay for a VA, one through accounting department, and they would need an invoice and a W-9, which there's no W-9 with a virtual assistant because you don't pay taxes on this one, or you don't pay benefits or sales tax or uh, payroll tax, rather. Um, two, pay for it out of my own pocket, but I would uh, need an invoice. And so what they would do is provide an invoice to you for the hours worked, and is that kind of how you, how you guys work that? We, yeah, I, I always, um, I always let the loan officers and the realtors know that you, we pay it every two weeks. I mean, they can do it however they want. If their company, um, there are some companies that don't understand that, the, the relationship, the, the job. But what I always tell everybody is, yes, have, have your virtual assistant um, send you an invoice every two weeks. And, and basically, it's a marketing expense, just like you have somebody fix your, you know, you, let's say you hire a company to do your social media. I wouldn't do it because they charge way too much. You can get a virtual assistant. For so much cheaper way but, too much yeah, yeah so way too much yeah those aren't going to be w2 employees or w9s they're, they're just you pay an invoice so i tell people to do that the second part of that question man i can tell you if your company does not allow virtual assistants you are crazy if you don't pay that out of your pocket i mean you're if let's say there's a a uh vending machine outside your office right now and if you put a dollar bill in that machine and a hundred dollar bill popped out, would you would you use that machine? <laughs> yes, all day long, right? So yeah, if it means you pay out of your own pocket, you're growing your business, your return on investment, it's literally the biggest ROI that I've seen in, in our industry is having a virtual assistant help you. And so yeah, if you have to pay out of your pocket, do it, because you're gonna make a lot more money. So it's, the, the employees and I think I think the hardest part I think the hardest part for people is to to pay the money wondering if the activities are going to have a result or, or yield a result of more contracts well here, here's the here's the problem that I see so we all do whatever we do every single day month after month year after year and if you're stuck in a rut you're doing the same okay maybe you closed I'm just gonna pull out 10 million in production last year and this year you're on track to close the same so something's got to change, right? Something has to change. So if the activities, whatever the activities are that help you to get the buyers to come in, the sellers to come in, to convert those buyers and sellers, to set up a follow-up plan for your lead sources, to ask for the business in a cool way, those are the four parts to a sale. We figured out how to delegate those. The problem I feel for most is when you free up that time, it's your responsibility to go do those sales activities not go play and where a lot of people go play instead of oh man i got two three hours because i'm not have to do that anymore well they'll spend that two hours doing those money high-end impact one thing money making activities and it's amazing you know and i'll just go here so somebody at somebody i i talked to somebody that made seven million dollars in the real estate business seven million and i said how did you do it and i always like asking this question he goes let me ask you a question he says what's the one thing that if you do the one thing you will have more business i said this dial for dollars, meet people, have conversations. It all boiled back to having conversations and letting people know who I am and what I do for a living. That's it. End of discussion. No matter what it takes, all the activities we talk about, whether it's the VA making, setting the appointment or whatever. And, and, and then the second question was, he goes, how much time do you spend doing that each week? I'm like, oh, okay. That's the answer. So, you know, average person in a room of 120 when we do these events, is zero to one hour a week. He goes, I do six hours a day, hmm. six hours every single day. I'm, I'm literally having conversations with somebody who could, would, should refer me or buy a house themselves. Six hours a day, every day, day in and day out. That's it. That's why he made $7 million. So he delegates a hundred percent of everything else. And that, and that's the, that's the power. Like money buys, they say money doesn't buy happiness, but money does, sure does buy help uh, to do the yeah. things that you can't do or shouldn't shouldn't do to help you grow your business. Yeah, that's huge. That's a perfect example of it. So I guess I'll, I'll take this real quick. I know we're going to run out of time, so we'll fly through these. But communicating with your virtual assistant, we use Skype, we use Zoom, we use video. Um, everybody has a different way. I like Slack because that, 
that's just a great software for managing tasks, for communicating, for for um, every, pretty much everything. So yeah, it's it's no different. You you know you're not face to face with people in your office. I've had Zoom meetings with people in the office, and they're in the next office, and we're not even together. So it's with today's day and age, like you said, Scotty. I mean, I'm in Texas. Gerard's in the Philippines. You're in Florida, and Doug's in Michigan. So we are like four total different parts of the world, basically, and it's no different. So yeah, Trello, Asana is all oh, my all-time favorite task management software. Uh, just check it out. We're, anybody that's interested, Gerard will send you an email with information on the best uses, best practices, best software that we use um, when we have virtual assistants and the best ones for the VA and the best ones for the realtor or loan officer. How do we know if they're working? You know, on the next uh, slide, Gerard's going to show you a software where you can check to make sure your VA is working. But I can tell you, I'm I'm old school. I'm like Scotty mentioned earlier in the in the call. It is all on results. All that matters is results. If I have, we have a VA that sets appointment. Yeah. If you're a loan officer and you want to meet with realtors, over and over every day, I talk to loan officers that we've helped hire VAs for. Hey, I, I want to have five realtor appointments a week. Boom, it's done. Your VA just fills your calendar. I have a VA right now that makes calls that literally, if I need my calendar filled, the calendar will be filled. And if I'm doing that on my own, it just isn't happening. Like, I hate to say it, but it's, yeah. Well, if anybody has questions about that, we can talk about that later too. How can you find qualified? There's a... There's a lot of ways. I'm going to talk about this, Gerard. I don't mean to um, step on your toes, but onlinejobs.ph, that's where I, that's where pretty much everybody starts. Because if you're a VA in the Philippines, um, you're going to sign up for online jobs because as a, some, a loan officer or a realtor in the U.S., you can go there and you can try to find a good VA. But so I, I um I, I would I would shy away from online jobs .ph. Let me let me just uh, this is just my I'm always fully transparent, Richard. So I apologize. Yeah. Um, I, 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 online jobs .ph. You're gonna go on there. You're gonna pay fifty bucks. You're gonna put in whatever you want for description of the VA, and you're gonna get seventy five to four hundred applications. Um, I don't even know how you can like manage that, let alone set like it's hard enough with seven. You, you, I've done this before and you'll get 700. Right. Um, if, and, and so Upwork, if you have a project, I believe that's for one specific project, like, Hey, I want a website done or I want, I don't know, whatever it is. Freelancer, I think is the same thing specifically for a project. Is that correct? So if you have a one and done type project, that's what the yeah. Upwork's or Upwork. freelance. Okay. Um, if I was going to do it, I, Gerard's been successful at, he's got a, I don't know how he does it. Don't, I don't care. He's good at it. And, that's why I delegated out to Gerard. He does it for, for our people. Um, and Terry, Terry Jeffries is asking, Gerard can absolutely positively help you find a VA specifically for what you're looking for. Uh, and there's different types of VAs there, you know, and so he can help you with that depending on the, you know, the severity, the, the complexity of, the, of what you want to accomplish on a daily, weekly basis. He can absolutely positively help you with that. So Terry, I can give you that information. That's just, that's just my 10 cents. There's, there, there is one other one um, that, I just personally know Richard and know Gerard. So if you're going to do it, like I, I, I would personally go through them. Um, and, and I mean, there, there's other there's ones other, out there, I'm sure, but there, so um, they, they, Gerard's in the Philippines and <laughs> has connections. So what better place to be than be in the Philippines when you're hiring a Philippine, you know, when you're hiring one over there. So thank you for yeah. what you do, man. I, I found over the years, the biggest mistake, not only that I made, but, over and over for, for years, Gerard and I would teach and help show people how to hire a v, how to hire their own VA. And it was the same thing over and over. The biggest mistake that we saw was getting the wrong person, you know, not getting the right VA or not having the right fit. And, um, and it, so we would have realtors, we'd have loan officers say, I just don't, you know, hire a VA. It, it doesn't work. It's, it's, it just didn't work for me. But the reason was it was the wrong fit. It wasn't the right person. And that's where Gerard, I will tell you, Gerard is amazing at finding the right fit. And like you said, Scotty, he's in the Philippines. 
He doesn't um, right. have a huge network over there. Like this guy has built a network that you, the people that, like I said, the right fit, it's not just what they want a VA to do. He knows personalities. He fits the, he fits the VA with the loan officer, with the, the realtor and gets the right personalities. And, and so it is unbelievably amazing the work that I've seen him do. When will I know it's time to fire? It's like we talk about results driven. Um, I have a mentor that says it all the time. When do you fire someone? And it's when, you know, when you start thinking about it. And so um, the cool thing with, with Gerard, I hate to keep going back and forth, but if, uh, if for some, I think, I think he's had two people out of hundreds that it didn't work out. And so, um, you fire them and you get another one and then it did, it does work out, but, but uh, it's, it's kind of, so, so what if Gerard, what if Gerard finds uh, one for Terry and like, and there's different types of VAs. There's a general VA, which probably is what most people need for right. starters. Um, there's technical VAs where they're like building websites and doing video editing and all kinds of, you know, that kind of stuff. And then I, I don't know, I don't know the three types, but, um, I'm guessing most people would want a general VA, email management, um, PowerPoint creation, setting up autoresponders, phone calls, booking yeah. appointments, running the calendars, receptionist duties, um, file management, database building, research on certain topics and, you know, stuff like that. Like, hey, hey, go, go check out this CRM system. You know, like I, I, like I refuse to do any of that when someone else can go spend an hour or two and give me feedback or bullet points of, hey, is this what we're looking for? And this is how we're going to use it. And this is why I think this is the right one. There's just so much time saving in that. And trying right. you know, so, um, yeah, so. Terry's um, like, do you recommend like, hiring different people for different segments of the jobs? Recruiting versus lead gen. Want to take a step at that, Richard? Uh, yeah, I, I would, yeah, I would. I would say yes. I think I, it depends what you're going to have them do. So yes, if but but I will say, like I said, Gerard is good at hiring attitude over experience. And so if it's if it's somebody that's really good on the phone, you can pretty much yeah. them most. The, the only thing that you usually don't find is somebody that's great at everything that we need them to do. Um, lead generation, phone calls, social media, they're not always going to also be able to build out an entire full website. You know, that's, that's a little bit different, but um, you know, I, I've had VAs that I, I'm kind of like you, Scotty, I want them to, to be able to make phone calls and also be able to do all of the other basic things like running my social media, running the database. Uh, Gerard can do anything. Anything that you, anyone on this call, anything you would ever want done, Gerard can do. And if he doesn't know how, he won't, he'll just figure it out. So, um, so yeah, but that would be something that I would definitely, uh, was that Terry that asked that? We can have a, uh, a strategy phone call and we can definitely talk about what exactly you're wanting them to do. And then if, if we think it might be good to just have one person or have two part-timers to, to that specialize in two different things, but yeah, we can talk yeah. about that. Here's a, here, here's a uh, great question. So, Fidel, Gonzalo, since you've been here, he says, what will the phone number say when they call to schedule an appointment for use? The cool part is you have it say whatever you want it to say because you can buy numbers. You can buy local right. numbers using uh, 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 Gerard U Skype, correct? Yeah, well, yes. we Skype or okay. uh, there's Ring Center. Let me, Scotty, we had a... Nobody knows over the years, nobody knows my VAs are in the Philippines. I had a, right. a I had a realtor show up at my office with a gift for one of the virtual assistants. And he didn't believe me when I said, she's in the Philippines. And he was like, man, I promise you, I'm not hitting on her. I just want to truly give her a gift for everything. She's <laughs> and I said, man, I'm serious. She's in the Philippines. So yeah, the, the number with the, with, with the phone system now and like, you know, uh, phone burner, you can put any number you want, but like when Gerard calls people 
and um, other VAs call, it's it's a local phone number. So nobody knows they're not in your town. It's crazy. Awesome. All right, and how do you All know right, you are hiring the yeah. right one or the red flags? Well, that is our trade secret. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I guess, you know, kind of to finish up. Yeah, there we go. So people want to know how to get a hold of you. I'm glad you put that up there. So uh, what's the best way if someone says, hey, man, I'm, uh, like, I want to talk to you about this. What's the best way? Number, email. Uh, what, what, what would you recommend the best way to, what would be? So I think the best way is really any of these three. I think if you, if you call or send an email, what we found works really, really well is um, I, I like to talk to the loan officer, or the realtor to, to do kind of a strategy call. And usually it's a 10 or 15 minute call where we kind of strategize what you're looking for, um, what you're wanting your VA to do, answer any quick questions. And then, and then Gerard takes over, and Gerard's amazing. I know he's very humble, but he, um, he'll, I, and I always tell everybody this, you're, the next step is you're gonna have a quick call with Gerard. He, you're gonna tell him what you want your VA to do, but I can tell you, he already, he already knows most of the time. But what he does, he's also talking to you, he's listening to you, he's hearing your personality, because he's matching you with the perfect VA. And that's where these other companies and people have had so many issues. Is, you know, you may be a great realtor, you, can, you may be a great loan officer, or, you know, but are you a great HR person? Have you had experience hiring? It, it's hard. I mean, it, you know, you're, it's one of those things where we're good at some things and we're not others. And that's where Gerard, his strength is, is matching and finding. So that that's, the process kind of Scotty. I hope I answered that right. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yep. So I guess just pick up the phone and call or shoot shoot uh, shoot an email to info at remoteassistantscout.com would be the best way to go. Yeah. Say hey, let's set up a time to talk and talk about what you want to accomplish and who what that person is gonna look like and all that fun stuff. So awesome. awesome guys. So hey Gerard man, thanks for getting up at two AM in the morning. You rock. <laughs> I'm working. Richard, so. as always, thanks for uh, thanks for keeping the wheels on the bus, man, and keeping the thing rolling. You've been instrumental in providing VAs for a ton of, thanks, ton of people, a ton of my friends, and I appreciate it. So I keep up the good work, it, man. and uh, man, it's the one thing. It's the one thing that can change your business and fast. And it's just you have to, you know, the acts of freedom. And if you, you guys have all had uh, access to the acts of freedom, where you do that list, and what are the three things that if I don't do these three things, I will be out of business in 90 days. And then everything else can be delegated. That's where your list comes from. Like, here's the things that I need to get to delegate. And when it comes to a real estate agent, um, there's a there's a link that I have. I think it's a 184 things that should or could be done for yeah. each client that they go through. It's insane. And so there's but there's one section that's all sales. And I think that that part is where um, where you could really benefit is stay in that one section and then delegate 100% of the rest. And, you know, you can talk with Gerard about that. And he can, he can like, I'm not saying delegate 100% of it all at one time, but do one thing at a time. Get him proficient at it, get it working, have results, two, three, four, five, and start with a list and just hold them accountable and then have current updates and weekly meetings and daily meetings and 15-minute chats. And when you want to change something or fix something, do a recording, send the video so it's, so it's in video format in, in a communication way that allows them to watch it over, or, or, over and over again. So, and then, and then it, Dougie, uh, pretty crazy, right? Yeah, then I, it, I love it. I know many LOs and I know many other professionals that use VAs, and it's uh, it is literally the best kept secret on the planet. I mean, no joke. That's why Gerard is so talented and why he's so why we even have this because it works so well. As long as you, what did you say before, Scott? You've got to let go to grow. This is having confidence to know that there's somebody who can do it at eighty percent as good as you and be able to deliver the message to your audience, to your clients, take the things off your plate that you're not good at or that you love doing, and it frees you up to do the things that you're really passionate about. And guys like Gerard and women like uh, that are out there that are out there that are men and women both, they all have the skill set to be able to do this for you. You just gotta be able to take the chance and be able to use it and, uh, and apply it in your business. It's awesome. 
Scotty, you're muted. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Sorry, yeah, I, got, sorry. I got somebody hacking away at the saw, so I apologize. <laughs> but appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys being here as always. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, taking taking your time out today. Mostly thank you, guys. Gerard, for getting up so early in the morning and uh, just being here for us, man. Thank you so much. Thank All you right. for your time. Thank you, Scotty. All right, guys. Take care, guys. All right, guys. Same time, same place Thanks, next uh, week. Dougie, appreciate you as always. Have a good day. Guys. Have a good weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all those mothers yeah. out there. Happy Mother's we'll see Day. See you guys on the web. Take care, everybody. Yeah,